Customer experience is the most important element when it comes to traveling, and the ability to provide the best customer experience is a key to success within the online travel agency industry. So today, obviously, they're quite, uh, excuse me, so obviously the customers will have a lot of different experience when he, tra when he travels, and this experience doesn't just start from the point when he steps off the plane when he enters a foreign country. Where it actually starts is when he actually goes online and look at where he can go, what he can do there, how he can go there, and where he can stay. And Suji Hong Kong has obviously been able to provide a very comprehensive platform for them to do so. However, what they're currently missing is how can they truly bring the excitement for their customers as well as being able to be very responsive to what they want. And these are the key issues that we would like to address today. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Isaac, and with me today are my colleagues to Norris, Shirley, and Tony. So today, the key objective for us is to, uh, is to consolidate our leadership position in Hong Kong. However, there's a key challenge. It's the fact that there's a gap between what Suji is currently offering to his customers and what the customer actually wants. So ladies and gentlemen, we're very proud to present our strategy of <coughs> personalized experience as well as personalized ex excitement as well as spontaneous booking. By personalized excitement, we would like to collaborate with Airbnb to provide alternative of the place that the customers can stay, not just to the hotel, but also some local household so that they can truly experience what it is like while visiting these foreign countries. And in terms of for, uh, spontaneous booking, it is also in response to how the customers are really spontaneous. They also prefer uh, last minute booking. And so we would like to provide a spontaneous booking system through our, our mobile platform. And all in all, we are confident that we will be able to increase Suji's market share to 4% in Hong Kong. So let's first have a look at what Suji can do as the next step of the expansion plan. Well, logically ahead, people will think that we should enter the Chinese market. However, given the uh, given the Chinese large market size as this growing trend, it's only obvious for us to go into that. However, before we do so, we actually need to understand that the Chinese market is highly competitive, and therefore we should first est first establish our position within the Hong Kong market before we actually enter China. And the main reason behind is because of the fact that Hong Kong customers very often are very similar to the nature of that in the Chinese customers. So by not only by establishing our position within Hong Kong, we can not just Grow, grow our company, but also have a better understanding of how we can further expand in the future. So therefore, we need to first establish a clear, clear differentiation point in the Hong Kong market before expanding into China. So let's have a look at what the, what the customer groups in Hong Kong really is. So first of all, there are baby boomers. However, these baby boomers, actually, what they actually really want is a face-to-face -face selling, the personal experience of being able to speak to someone. And as well as that, they also would really like to have a planned packages before they travel. So obviously, person-to-person -person selling is something that online travel agency is not able to provide because what we're offering right now is the online experience for them. So offline-wise, we are not able to help the baby, target the baby boomers. And however, there's also another group of the millennials. Now, they're having, they having a rapid growth rate within Hong Kong, and they're very tech savvy as well as they travel. They, they treasure the personalized, ex personalized experience that we can provide. Therefore, Suji Hong Kong is better fitted to target the millennials in Hong Kong. And now that we have, have a better understanding of what the customer is like in Hong Kong, we can also have a look at the competitors in Hong Kong. So in terms of the competitors in Hong Kong, we first have some of our global players who have very strong global network. However, what they are focusing on as a majority is in terms of the long haul flights, while the millennials in Hong Kong actually really focus is the short haul flights. So the global players are not as well fitted as Suji to target these millennials. And on the other hand, there are also some of the traditional players in Hong Kong, such as Wing On, uh, ring on traveling hub and they, what they're providing is the brick and mortar shop so it's the offline p2p p2p um, personal selling part as well and so they're more focused on in the baby boom uh, the baby boomers uh, customer group so suji hong kong actually ha already has an edge over its competitors in hong kong so now, now also let us have a look at what we are currently providing well what we have as our competitive advantage right now is our joint venture with different airlines our extensive network with 16 different airlines in, within this industry, as well as a very well-established IT system. And what is really missing from what the customer wants, the personalized, personalized experience for them, as well as the spontaneousness of how we can respond to their needs. And finally, all in all, is the value for money that the customers truly, truly want. So we can see that there's actually a gap for Suji Hong Kong to provide more personalized excitement for them, as well as a more spontaneous booking system. So here comes today's key question of how can Suji Hong Kong provide personalized experience and improve its mobile platform. Thank you, Isaac. So in order to answer the key question, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to introduce to our strategy, 
which is to give personalized excitement and also cultivate spontaneous booking in order to enhance customer satisfaction through value of money and to consolidate our position in Hong Kong. I'll further elaborate on our first strategy. We believe that it is essential to cultivate a personalized experience for customers when they travel. Let's take a look at the current customer process. When customers really want to go somewhere, for example in Japan or Korea, they will first search air, first for airlines. And this is actually one of our core competencies as we are composed of a joint venture of over 16 major airlines in the Asia Pacific region. Secondly, they will then um, search a place to stay. But currently, we see a gap in this. Currently, our partnerships are only with hotels. And this gives the implication that we lack, lack variety in the terms that some customers really want to experience the local culture and would value local households. Secondly, these customers would then have to take the initiative to find different websites and to consolidate them. And we see this is highly inconvenient. In Hong Kong, everyone really enjoys a comprehensive and a one-stop service. So the key implication for today is that Suji needs to expand its network for hospitality to enhance a personalized experience. We think that the most essential approach is to collaborate with Airbnb in order to expand our network. Airbnb is an intermediary that connects customers with local households. Let's look at the revised customer process with our recommendation. Millennial customers, which we think that are most valued in our recommendation, would then choose our airlines, and then they have two choices. If they value comfort, they can utilize our established networks and partnership with the hotels of over 150 hotels. And if they feel adventurous, or they really want to explore and enhance and experience local culture, they can use our additional uh, strategic partnership with Airbnb to achieve their goal. So, we think that Airbnb is the best way in order to enhance the customer experience. This is because, firstly, the benefits it gives to Suji is that it cultivates new brand values for Suji. It allows us to further enhance our position as being a cheap, affordable, and also a provider that allows customers to really truly personalize their itineraries and the travel process through our variability and also our flexibility. This allows us to enjoy a new differentiation point in the saturated OTA market through enhancing our value of money, which we have identified as the key differentiator and the key value point for customers in Hong Kong. So why has Airbnb have the incentive to really collaborate with us? This is because we see that Airbnb currently has the mission and the intention to further penetrate into the Asia Pacific region and specifically in Hong Kong. We can see that currently they have really put lots of effort in different marketing campaigns and marketing efforts in terms of online and offline. And we think that ultimately through our partnership with, uh, with Suji, they're able to achieve the ultimate goal as Suji. Firstly, we can bring additional traffic to these to Airbnb. Secondly, we are also an online-based system and platform. Therefore, integration and collaboration between us and Airbnb is, would be easy and would, the transition would be very smooth when compared to other brick and mortar um, companies and suppliers. And lastly, we are one of the key leaders in the OTA market in Hong Kong, and therefore we see high intent incentive for them to really work with us to further sustain their objectives in Hong Kong as well. We are also going to implement a profit sharing scheme to get Airbnb on board. We will give 60% of the revenue from the bookings to Airbnb in order to get them on board. This may seem weird. Why would we put ourselves in the minority? Well, we believe that in what is most important in the industry of being a travel agency or an intermediary is actually network. So by improving our network, we can actually also drive our airline sales, which is one of the key stakeholders of our company, and ultimately create a new brand and a new value that we provide new customer experiences 
and to ultimately consolidate our leading position in Hong Kong. Now, Shirley will talk more about our second recommendation. Thank you, Norris. So after we have achieved our personalized excitement with our new value deal that is more comprehensive, we will now move on to see how we can allow the customers to have a more spontaneous booking to enter our new value deals. So we see that our customers, who are mostly frequent independent travelers, what they value are the value deals that have comprehensive bookings as well as some um, customer choices which has been achieved with our first recommendation. And secondly, what they also value is the last minute booking that we haven't quite achieved yet. So we see that the next step for Suji would be to achieve the last minute booking to provide the booking services that can be done anywhere, anytime with the mobile platform to be leveraged. So we see that as the joint venture of over 16 airlines, we have the core competency of the strong relationship with these airlines to have them to provide the real-time information of airline, for example, the number of available seats and the most updated price to us. And then we also can secure the priority in booking for our customers with a strong relationship. So the question is, how can we provide these most updated information to the customers? We understand that nowadays, most millennials make their decisions spontaneously with their mobile platforms. So the key enabler here is that we have to make sure our PC system and our mobile platform, all the information on these platforms will be in sync so that the customers can secure the most value deal anywhere, anytime, even if they're on the street. So we see that Suji can differentiate in themselves in terms of the customer experience after they have secured this last minute booking. So for example, let's imagine two friends, Mary and Peter. They are in a cafe, they want to go on a trip at the weekend, maybe tomorrow. They want to go to Korea. But the problem is, how can they secure a last minute deal with such a rush? Now, they have some choices. One is the airline website, which is not quite good for them as it is very inconvenient. All the travel elements, for example, the accommodation, are separated in other websites. So they can't get a one-stop services at the airline websites. And the other choice are the other online travel agencies, which is also not a very good choice for them. For example, for Sea Trip, it is really China-focused that has only provided mainly the China-focused air tickets for the customers. And for the other online travel agencies, they do not have such a strong partnership with the Anna as compared with us at the joint venture of Airlines. So they can't have a similar reliability in terms of securing the Anna tickets as compared with us. So let's see what competitive advantage we have here. We, as a joint venture of the Airlines, we can guarantee the priority of the customers in securing the Anna tickets even if they want to go on the trip tomorrow. And then we also can provide the convenience in terms of our one-stop convenient travel package. And thus, let's move on to see how we can actually implement this. We see that the technology of syncing the mobile PC and the airline IT systems it is, is the key enabler here for us to provide the most updated information on mobile or PCs. So we see that uh, with over 16 airlines as the joint venture, they have all they all have very IT systems to consolidate their information. So the key here is that we have to make sure that we can establish a one-stop service where all the information is in sync on the same platform, so that they can be immediately transferred to our platform to be seen on PC or mobile. So we have to make sure that we have the most updated information of the seats available, as well as the price at the moment of purchase, so the customers know that they just have to pay that price at the most accurate information that will not change thereafter. And then the airlines would definitely have the incentive to work with us, as we are actually bringing cu customers to them, and we are maximizing our shareholder interest. So we see that with these last minute booking enabled, if an, uh, for even one hour before flight enabled, we can secure the customer's satisfaction. So with our two recommendations of personalized excitement and the spontaneous booking, we can eventually achieve customer satisfaction. So <clears throat> thank you, Norris and Shelley, about the strategy. Today, we would like to differentiate ourselves in this fear competition in Hong Kong. 
So we want to re really consolidate our value proposition in domestic market within a short term. So therefore, our strategy will be evaluated in a four-year cycle. So first of all, with the first of all, we will be first develop our mobile platform in order to provide a real-time information to our customers. This is because we think, we understand and we identify that our target customer, millennial, really value, the, for example, the spontaneous purchase very much. <coughs> After that, we, are, we aim to have our partnership with Airbnb within the first and a half year. This is because the negotiate pro negotiation process will be quite difficult and comprehensive before actually we launch this program. Because we need to, came, we need to actually identify how we share the profit and how we integrate the platform to make a one-stop solution to our customers. So after talking about how we actually estimate when we will implement our strategy, one of the things we need to take into consideration is the foreseeable risks. First of all, as we are doing a partnership with Airbnb, it may be a potential risk that we may jeopardize our, per our current partnership with our hotel partners which we had uh, 150,000 hotel partner with our company. So we would like to focus on conveying a message that actually we are targeting the partnership with different kinds of customer. First of all, for the hotel, it's actually focusing on those who want to really have a comfortable and want to have a leisure lifestyle. And for for the we our new partnership Airbnb, we are targeting with those who want to have a low experience, local culture, and also want to really have an adventurous uh, traveling experience in their holidays. So, to evaluate the effectiveness of our strategy, here are three of the key performance indicators that we would like to actually take into consideration. First of all, is the numbers of people visiting our new website. It's because by actually doing our new marketing, our new value repositioning, we are targeting to the new millennials. So we hope use this as a gimmick to actually attract more and more people to visit to our website and look for the quotes. The second one is the purchase ratio per numbers of click to get the quotes. So actually you can see that now, now there's many people who come to our website and actually get the quote. However, there are a lot of other players in the, com in the market to actually compare the quote, and then they may not essentially convert to the purchase of to the, our company. So currency, we estimate the numbers to be 10% as is the relative numbers of our market share in the, um, in the market. But however, in long term, we would like to boost it to 20% in 2020 because we are doing something different. We are providing something cheap and also a new sensation to our customers. Lastly, is the numbers of downloads which estimate by which, which estimate by the, the size of millennial in market. We in Hong Kong there are approximately twenty percent of millennial. We are targeting to have one of the millennials download our application out of four of them. So lastly, we'll talk about the cost estimation. So which is what is the major cost of our strategy, which is the R and D of the mobile platform and also the integration of the interface of the Airbnb and also our application. So with the cost of four to five million Hong Kong dollar and one million Hong Kong dollar for the R&D, actually we, our company is able to financially support these strategies. After that, the commission of air to Airbnb will approximately to be 1% of our operating income. What is the reason? It's actually we are doing intermediary and our profit margin is actually very low. We estimate the numbers to be around four to five percent. And as we and also see, the hotel is actually contribute to maybe a smaller part of our company revenue. So the number is 1%. And ultimately, we would like to obtain a market share of 4% in order to have a solid base to have a global expansion. So at the end of the day, we, we identify that our target customer is millennial. So we look at what they actually need. They need a spontaneous purchase experience. And also, they want to customize their trip. So we, because we think that the trip experience, uh, the trip experience is not just about when you arrive the foreign country, but actually start from the point you click to purchase of the tickets and the hotel. So all in all, we, we as an intermediary, we care about the customer satisfaction. 
we would like to use these strategies to increase the customer satisfaction, not just about traveling, but from the moment they purchase the ticket. So, we are going to go. I have a question. Uh, so, the, um, obviously, the goal of said is to personalize the experience and create excitement, collaborate with Airbnb, and uh, have spontaneous booking. Um, what happens if Airbnb doesn't want to collaborate with you? What happens if they don't do collaborations? Or what happens if they collaborate, but they collaborate with everyone? How are you going to, that, that's, because that's a key part of your strategy. What are you going to do? Definitely. We believe that Airbnb, why we have the most incentive for Airbnb to work with us is mainly two reasons. Mainly, first, we are the key market leader in the OTA market in Hong Kong. And secondly, we have also the vision and to really cater to the millennial market, which we believe that is also consistent to the objectives currently. In our, um, maybe our collaboration details, we might have some, um, some contract or some terms in order to bind them with us in the, sh uh, bind them with us so they will have to in really work with us and we will have the sole, um, they will only have, they will only work with us in, uh, in the short run. Is that risky for them though? Because the fact is, just because you're a leader but you still have a small, mar market so small, mm -hmm. why would they, why would they risk doing that, uh, number one? Uh, and secondly, the other thing I also, you, you talked about in your presentation, you talked about, um, you'll do profit sharing, you're gonna share 60% of your revenue. Like revenue or what do, you, what do you mean by that? Oh, maybe I'll clarify the second part of your question. So actually the 60% is coming from, for example, the original uh, projection for the commission from the hotel. For example, for example, we charge like 2% of our commission from the hotel. Yeah. And actually we are dividing that 2%, we are not collecting 2% anymore. And we are maybe divided that we're spending 60% of that 2%, which is approximately 1.2% to the Airbnb, which is because we think that our ultimate stakeholder is the, the 60 airlines that joined, engaged in the joint venture. We would like to increase the ticket sales for them because it's our ultimate goal. So if you, the, the, the commission you get from the hotel, you're gonna give 60% of it to Airbnb to incentivize them to stay with you. Yeah, that, that, that comes with, to launch the strategies, we're charging, for example, the, the commission, we will be using something, we take a reference to that hotel, but in long term, it may also, because this kind of thing is under negotiation, we will need to bring the best profits to them and also to bring the best profits to us. So we approximately, we use the current commission scheme, and, but divide more to the, the Airbnb. If I'm the CEO of Airbnb, I mean, I, I'm not convinced as to what value you're bringing to me. I mean, I would think, well, actually, if this was a proposition, why wouldn't I go to one of the global online players who's going to be able to offer me more. Secondly, I think in Hong Kong, I mean, if you, if to Airbnb, there's um, the licensed hotel, uh, licensed, what is it, uh, guest house sort of thing. So anybody here is supposed to be licensed, not a big market for Airbnb. So I'm really struggling to see why Airbnb is, is going to get out of this. Well, yes, certainly we can see that um, there's perhaps more incentive for them to um, collaborate with global players. However, the main point for us is the fact that we have extensive um, local knowledge, which some sometimes we have identified perhaps TripAdvisor or Expedia, which is what they're lacking. We understand what our customer really wants. And I'm not saying that TripAdvisor, they don't, but we have an edge over them because we know more about it. So this is definitely the, the key incentive for Airbnb for us as well. And the other point is the fact that Airbnb, as we can see uh, recently, they have been doing a lot of um, marketing efforts within Hong Kong. So it's really obvious that they really want to further expand within the Hong Kong market as well. And being one of the leaders within the OTA industry in Hong Kong, we are certainly, be, we will certainly be able to collaborate with them and help them achieve the common goal of us both expanding across into China as well. So um, in terms, uh, can, can you please repeat the second question? I think the other one was sort of, there's Airbnb, I mean, there's the licensed guest house requirements. Yeah, so anybody who wants to go on Airbnb technically should be licensed. So there's the issue of 
Airbnb is going to have a lot of uh, people offering their homes. Definitely. Uh, can I clarify a question? You're asking about the licenses in Hong Kong or in foreign countries? In Hong Kong. In Hong Kong. Well, that because we have a knowledge and identified the key markets in Hong Kong, it's actually customers who want to go abroad. So we think that and Airbnb has really established its global presence. So for example, in Korea or in Japan, they've established and abide to the laws there. And we see there should be no problem for them to abide any more laws in the future as well. Uh, quick thing, you just mentioned that um, a lot of the global firms focus on long haul flights, and you're gonna focus on short haul flights. So a uh, quick question, two questions actually. How will you be different on on your focus on short haul flights. What were you going to offer different relative to other companies that, that do the same thing? Um, and secondly, you, you mentioned about you know we're going to offer spontaneous booking, but, but don't all online all online companies offer spontaneous booking? I mean, I can go online and book right away and get a great right deal. Yes, certainly, this is definitely the case. Um, but in terms of what we can leverage on is our extensive network of sixteen different airlines. So this is our core competency is our ability to be able to know uh, which sort of flights have. Uh, the, an extra seat for different customers so that we can immediately put him into this airline or that airline when it needs to be. So this is definitely what we can, we can leverage on is the fact that we have a joint venture with the, uh, the high number of airlines. So I just want to still want to go back to the Airbnb. I yeah. mm -hmm. um, understand that your differentiation of these spontaneous booking so people want to go on a trip yeah. they can do. I see one now but then let's say you know quick enough. Obviously then you differentiate yourself Besides uh, getting airlines, is the accommodation. So I think what you present is differentiate. I want to spontaneous trip, so I can book the airline to get a say that person will go to Airbnb. I'm not sure how you can tackle that because Airbnb takes being they're just a medium. If you have gone through before, ultimately they link you up. You're available. The owner of the flat ultimately can say no. I can mean, say I don't like your face on that. They can say no. How are you going to manage that spontaneous being sale if flight is a very specific kind of flight, you know, model that you have, potential facing legal risk that, well, sorry, you actually don't get a foundation, you don't get the flight, but I want a whole lot. Have you thought about that as well? So as we thought about that, so today our strategy is actually to, how to say, we're targeting different, two different features of our millennials because we identify that, first of all, those millennials will be more or less want to go for some uh, millennials, uh, so spontaneous. For example, you got a working a working holiday next week, and you can actually go. How you need to plan, for example, a day before. So that part we will be using leveraging on our core community, which is our network extensive network and priority with our sixteen airline. On the other hand, we also understand that millennials actually want to try something new, and also they may, they originally they may, for example, they may separate the purchase from different company. However. We actually think that this separate process caused a lot of trouble because you need to negotiate, for example, the time frame, and you need to do a lot of coordination between the two companies. So we're targeting by integrating our service and the information exchange. We would like to bring a seamless purchase experience to our customer. And adding on to what Tony has said, uh, to address your problems of how to really mitigate the problem when the customers really go through Airbnb and they may be no uh, available um, housing, for example. We will definitely mitigate that by compensating, compensating them through utilizing our established hotel partnerships with over 150 hotels, as ultimately, we are trying to give our customer the best experience and give them more variety and more choices. So we are able to, um, for example, unfortunately, if they really do not have that, we are able to give them another choice by going to a regular hotel. I guess the other thing is you've got a baby boomer market at the moment um, and that's obviously contributing revenue to you. Um, what's going to happen to them? Definitely. Um, we have considered that and we believe that usually uh, um, the key enablers in the family is actually teenagers and maybe children. Teenagers, we consider them as millennials, and we see they have high incentive to really utilize our platform and bring their families with them. So we th think that through the online platform, we're able to really act as a key initial point for these families, which consists of baby boomers as well. As we understand that many of the baby boomers will be highly influenced by the other family members in the, in the family, for example, the millennials may play as a key decision maker. 
how about we also understand that there's another segment of the baby boomers who make the decision and they may not want to try online services as all day as they might not be as tech safety as the other segment of millennials. So we understand that we can't target all of them and, and thus we focus only on those tech safety millennials and we understand that baby boomers would charge more on personal person to person communication as well as the consultation services which we obviously cannot provide and thus we uh, baby movements is not a focus today. I guess I've got one more question then, which is uh, also on your airline network, you say that it's one of your real strengths, but aren't they also turning into one of your one of their threats? I mean you've got uh, all the low cost carriers, they've got their own internet lines, you've got uh, a cafe with its fan fares, you can book package deals on, on online and everything. So I mean they're, they're almost replicating what you can offer. Is it there actually? Uh, definitely. But we think that due to the composition of the company, which is actually a joint venture amongst these companies, they have really aligned their interests. And even if they do individual fanfares or special discounts, it will be a really short-term effect. But we, what we're trying to do now is really cultivate a new customer um, culture, customer experience which will be sustainable long-term in order to consolidate our position in Hong Kong. So we understand that, for example, Cafe Pacific, especially for example, they are launching some of the discount, for example, fanfare, and for example, the special discount to those university students they finish their semester break. But actually, those kind of thing is, for example, that you need to undergo a actually planning process. You can't for that discount, you can't actually enjoy it, for example, one day before your trip. But today, we also address that, that we understand that there are many low-cost carriers they want to fulfill their utilizations of their actually their aircraft. For example, they got a lot many of may, they may have many empty seats. So we actually want to provide those value. For example, link them with those people who want to go for some last-minute uh, purchasing. For example, they got a, a business trip tomorrow, maybe or a business trip that afternoon. So by this, we may better help them to have a uh, utilization and also add value to our overall process type. Just one more, um, obviously you guys offering, a, again I'm trying to see how you guys differentiate from the other players. Um, you're offering obviously spontaneous booking, obviously with a uh, hotel, link up with either Air Airbnb, Airbnb or, or airline. If there are issues, we are going to be responsible for that. Let's say you know, hotel or Airbnb, I have a complaint. Are you guys going to just tell the customer to go deal with them directly? I mean, what have you thought about that? Because you are offering one stop shop the way you're here. So who's going to do airline problem, Airbnb, hotel? Well, we understand that this is actually a common situation for all the online travel agencies that have to deal with uh, as, intermediary, as the intermediary to deal with different complaints of the different uh, hotels, accommodation agencies. And we are not really the person to deal with the problems directly, We, but we will provide the platform for them to convey the, uh, their feedback, their opinion, and then we will act as their intermediary to, to connect these two parties to actively communicate to see what is the improvement possible, and then uh, we will try to uh, provide the maximum uh, help to for the agencies to solve these problems. In terms of establishing networks with hotels, right? How are you going to go and, and, and broaden, broaden the hotel network experience or, or, or a relationship? What are you going to do there? So we identified that currently for the local, the, for the customer in local, they as they most of them prioritize go to those short hot travel, which is for example Asia Pacific regions such as Vietnam, Thailand, etc. Currently, you can see that. We are more focusing on, for example, exchange uh, partnership globally. So we will prioritize finding hotel nearby in the nearby countries, such as China, which we have done, for example, for the B two B, the corporate, the business stuff, and also Tha uh, Taiwan, Japan, and Korea. Strengthen our bond with those the hotels in Asia Pacific region, and also with Airbnb to build uh, for a better network within the, for example, five hour flights region. How are you going to, and, and, and the whole strategy with Airbnb and the hotels and the collaboration on the house, how are you going to fund all this? How are you going to come up with the money to fund it? 
future plan to fund it. Oh, so so currency, we can see that first of all, <coughs> for the R and D for the strategies, we got the financial uh, financial uh, support to do that. But if they put a potential risk to our liquidity, we may also seek, uh, for example, external fund financial source, which is, for example. Uh, borrowing money. It's because for this critical moment, we need to build up, actually build up our market share. Because there is a lot of competition nowadays. We can't just wait for people other to attack us. We need to aggressive. We need to actively build our network. So actually, in this critical moment, we need to have a critical meet. So we may consider actually borrowing money or to finance those, for example, establish the network. 